So here's a little ZVS circuit I had set up that I was using sort of as a high frequency inverter before. The way I had it wound was uh, from about 20 volt output I got my line voltage RMS for running loads particularly uh, incandescence or straight LEDs. I basically doubled the amount of turns on here to be able to get the same, roughly the same voltage output from a 12 volt source like I'm gonna run it right here. This being basically a bifiler wind of wires and then I basically took the start of one and the end of the other and I've sent it up to splice them together here. So that basically leaves me with twice the number of turns. What I'm basically doing here is I'm showing the difference between driving it this way, driving a load on the output legs this way, as opposed to, let's say, something I would call like a Don Smith type setup. I'm not quite sure if there's maybe another name for driving it like that, um, and power inverters and things like that, switching circuits, but it's reminiscent of like a service feed, um, you know, like single phase where you basically got a neutral, which is a center tab, and you've got two lines, except in this case, the two lines are rectified and then tied together and you've got a DC output using that center tab as your ground so right now I'm not doing that I'm just I've just got these bulb loads here tied to each line so you could say I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring the neutral right now I've just got line to line voltage right here they're before the diodes that I've got on here so when I cut that on I've just got the one bulb on now that's what my consumption is it's about you know, probably what you would expect that's only a 40 watt bulb right there so I would say it's it's driving it you know relatively efficient but so if I take another bulb and screw it in I jump from you know a little under four amps to a little over five amps then you can see the intensity of the bulbs decrease so they sort of start sharing that output there and then once again I add another one see sort of the same thing happen and then now I'm pulling all the way up to about six amps so and you know it, does, it works all right it's not too bad um, but the way this resonant transformer works there's some more variables going on you know, this is not simple transformer action just kind of give a reference that's what it looks like when I drive it like that from the two lines similarly what I could probably do is I could start using this uh, center tap as a common so feed it twice the voltage let's say if I'm running two bulbs I'll throw one on this side and then throw one on the other side that would be more similar to like a residential service feed where you know if my two loads are identical then I really shouldn't be any I really shouldn't see any current across the center tap here to just be sort of a line to line circuit with the two loads in series in this case it's not quite like that because got two diodes coming out so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect these two diodes together and that's going to be my positive output and then the center tab is going to be my negative. I'll probably just drive it similarly how I'm doing it right now I'll just get a little adapter like that and use a uh, 20 volt drill battery. Instead of 12 volts to get the line output that I'm getting now line to line I'll just feed it 20 volts and I'll still get roughly the same voltage so that, I'm going to hook it up like that and then show how it runs that way. Alright so now you can see I've got one leg on these loads here going to the center tap connection and the other one is running to both of those diodes connected together still at 12 volts you can see uh, I don't have the voltage to light anything up all the way um, so that's why I say I need about 20 volts let's put it at about 20 volts and I haven't quite measured that but I'm just assuming from previous testing that's pretty close to uh, about 120 or so RMS now with that set up about 20 volts on a little over a couple amps so with the increase in drive voltage I might have increased the efficiency here a little bit so you can see it's wanting to pull a little bit over 40 watts and just to the eye I'm gonna say that's about what it was before that's about close to what it would look like plugged in straight from the wall it's just a rough estimate a rough guesstimate with the one bulb about 40 watts now if I screw another bulb in the one thing that I immediately notice is uh, it's a lot harder to register a change in the brightness of this bulb. It's a lot harder to see it dimming. It does ever so slightly, almost for like a split second it seems like, but I can't really notice it looking at it with the naked eye. It only appears on the camera, and that's 
probably because the camera's adjusting also with that extra brightness that's coming on. Um, so I don't see the load, I don't see this first bulb getting any dimmer at all when I cut the second one on. You see what happens there, we go from about 2 amps to a little over 3 amps. So, so I'd say a little under 2.5 amps to a little under 3.5 amps. So we added about an amp by throwing that second bulb on there. And then if I add another one, it's more or less the same thing. I, I cannot notice any visible change in these bulbs as I add this third one. And then with that third one, go a little bit under 2.5 to a little bit under 4.5. So I'm literally just adding an amp here for every bulb that I'm putting on. I'm going to take one of these off, see what happens with the bigger load, this halogen, which is going to be a much thicker filament. So again, um, with these resonant circuits, you know, a lot of this, there's a lot of variables that you might see that you won't see in regular transformer action at, at a line of frequency. So the size of the filament actually has a pretty, pretty big thing to do with it, and it's not so much a resistance thing. So if I screw that one in, now that one works pretty good all the same, immediately feel the heat comes on like it's supposed to. That one's only pulling about 3 amps so that can't be full brightness not quite full brightness so that's either loading it down some which I really don't think it is or I just need a few more volts on here but to the eye that looks pretty damn close to line voltage brightness to me and uh, just the heat coming off of it that's pretty much what it looks like to me when I plug it in. Go from a little under an amp to about 3 amps. I'm going to have just one of those in. See what happens when I plug this one in. So again, interestingly, it is very hard for me to register a change in the brightness in the other bowl. Again, it's, it appears that way on camera because it's compensating for the extra brightness being added in here. There is a change. It is just very, 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 very tiny. So again, uh, with this arrangement, uh, now I'm pulling you know, about 100 watts of the uh, drill battery, 20 volts to do that. But I'll say the difference is, without using this method with the two diodes here in that center tap, um, I couldn't have all three of these loads running before without a huge visible difference and the brightness there they would drop down pretty pretty good. So that is to say it's hard to say for sure what the variable there is. I mean I am driving this primary at higher voltage or I'm driving the circuit at higher voltage uh, so that primary is seeing higher voltage and as opposed to before where I only ran it at 12. So that is to say I'm not quite sure if there would be a huge difference between what I'm doing right here and just feeding this twice the voltage but then running these loads the same exact way except just referencing between the center tap and one of the lines at, at a time. So I'm probably going to just throw this together as like a little bootleg inverter high frequency that I can apparently, from what I can tell, you know, run, what is that, close to, you know, 150 watts so, watt or so loads, incandescence, things like that, and it doesn't really struggle. I can do that from a little drill battery. 